A very good morning to you and welcome back. It's time for Youth and Politics. And of course, today we get to talk about something we have for long been talking about corruption and of course fraud. Well, since the 1965 gay male scandal, we have had a series of these uh, corruption scandals coming all through from the gay, as I mentioned, and of course the golden bug, the famous one. Then now we have the recent, of course, the NYS and the most famous Aral and Kimorel Dam scandals. Well, what have been leading to all these kind of issues? What is the role and the responsibility of young people in combating corruption and fraud? This morning I'm joined by a panel of uh, quite uh, informed people and persons who have been in the field and still are in the field. Of course, right to my next is Asa Wanjiro, who is a fraud examiner and of course an investigator and the project manager at OCS. OCS is the Ojiambo Consulting Services Group. And of course, right on my right, hand side far, far right, is uh, Kabere Baru, who is a political analyst. Good morning. All right. Then next to him, we have uh, Mr. Collins Ojiambo, who is a forensic investigator at Ojiambo Consulting Services Group. I just want to hold it in the mic. I want to begin with you, uh, Collins. Let's begin the conversation. Corruption has become the song of the day. We have had scandals after scandals after scandal. What do you think is leading to all these issues in the country? Um, I think uh, the main thing, it's, a, it's lifestyle and cultural. Uh -huh in the sense that uh, everyone wants a good life and what has happened over time, we've glorified that uh, the only way to measure success is mm -hmm. by having uh, money, the big thing, the, mm -hmm. the glamorous uh, living. Now because of that, everyone is uh, actually rushing to if, amass wealth. To amass wealth. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you are a public servant or you've been working, this is the fear of uh, poverty. Mm -hmm. You are looking, I'm going, I'll be retiring. What, uh, what, what will happen to me? So you want to amass to build uh, security. And then where, it's, uh, also s where the society has also messed is uh, people say, hey, this person was in office now, look at, he doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. What does it inform the guys who are there? Mm -hmm. They are saying, oh, now I don't want people to say that I don't have anything. Let me amass, I build uh, uh, security for myself and my mm -hmm. family so that I can show guys that actually I was there in office and I'm someone who's uh, worth uh, respecting. Mm -hmm. So we have a wrong measure of success, which is heavily geared towards uh, money and uh, material things, regardless of how they've been acquired. Is it a question of success? Or is it a question of uh, the people that you lead? Because oftentimes we have had, uh, we, as we were talking alone outside the site, off the site, we talked about the issue of the private and public sector. Now, we have made it to look like it's a public sector thing. What are some of the things that we need to consider when also talking about the private sector? Uh, you see what happens when it's a public sector. The main area where corruption is, uh, takes place is through procurement. Right. So when public sector is doing procurement, they are basically doing it with someone in private sector. So if at all, if it's something as basic as a bribe, the person paying a bribe is not from the public sector, it's from, from private sector. So the, th the thing is that you cannot have public sector corruption without a player in the private sector. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. With that, I think it's time for me now to bring in Barrio. But Barrio, uh, the corruption index for Kenya is at the rate of 143. That is, sorry, that is where we stand. And when we consider countries like Botswana, you know, they're far much better than we're doing. Of course, we cannot consider, we can, of course, consider population, of course. Looking at South Africa, Nigeria, but Kenya is at 143. Nigeria is at 144, and the population is quite significant. What is not happening? Well, uh, good morning, and thank you for having me on the show today. And uh, I can see that uh, in Kenya, there is a lot of hard work when it comes now to corruption, not even on okay, fighting. People are working hard to be corrupt. People are working hard to be corrupt. <laughs> and uh, I think all the systems are favoring corruption in the country. Because when you look at even the three arms of the government, from the executive, the legislature, and even the judiciary first, let's look at the executive. What is it that, what, what, what roles have they put to Im implementation such that we have a goodwill from top from the president to the cabinet to fight corruption? We are saying that these are the same people who are employing and recycling people who have corrupt, corruption cases. And we have seen them even from the ones who are with the scandals previously, they are the same people who have been brought back to the government. On the legislation side, do we have strong laws which are there to make sure that even those people are corrupt and even those people with the intention to be corrupt? they are scared enough. I think that the punishment for corruption 
is not punitive enough to scare anyone. Actually, right. it has become like it's a reward. Because looking at the governors and the senators, we have people who have a long history of corruption. And these are the same people who have been rewarded either with votes or even with plum those are elective positions. positions. Exactly. But now, this we have now changed the lens that even we as common Moana Inchi, we have a role to play in, in terms of fighting the corruption. And right. that's why we think that as we are talking of other people from even the other hams, let's look at even the common Moana Inchi. Mm -hmm. What role do we have as the people? This is now we change the narrative and the paradigm. We have a paradigm shift whereby mm -hmm. we start with integrity to start with us so that the people we entrust with the leadership, these are the people with clear integrity issues and no corruption. All right, Kaberia, talking about the paradigm shift that you need to have, mm -hmm. my question is, Kaberia, we have seen the president coming out categorically clear and saying that we are going to fight corruption to our best. Mm -hmm. He brought in DPP, Lord in Haji. We have seen so much of radical changes. We have seen arrests. And he, even the latest, we have seen people being evacuated from their offices. Well, I think, uh, to be honest, and you know, we are all living in this country and we know, we understand the politics and what plays inside and out of this. There is a very big difference of starting out in public holding a microphone like what I'm doing and saying that we are fighting corruption. And there's another arm whereby you don't just speak but you move with action. Having a DPP is not enough. Having um, maybe a DCI, a strong DCI is not enough. But now we need to see, you know, when you are the president, you're in charge of the government and the state. Mm -hmm. You as it should move more from just threatening and drawing ones which are scaring, but also coming and see what action are you taking as the president? Because president can veto powers and do so many things. But now the president himself is the one who is appointing those people who have been in the corruption. We've seen him even recycling some of the commissioners. Like, let me allow me to mention Kazungu Kambi. Kazungu Kambi was sacked as a CS some time back because of some corruption at the NSSF. But now the same person has been recycled to bring in the same corruption as a commissioner in the National Land Commission. Mm -hmm. This is a presidential appointment. Mm -hmm. So I can't see a good will or a strong will from the president himself to fight corruption. This is just a narrative to sugarcoat things, just to flavor things, to put some chocolate so that we can be able to see that he's fighting corruption. But on the ground, V2 is different. <laughs> all right, all right. Before I come to you, Elsa, let me come to you, Collins. He has talked about several issues about the system and the laws and the, everything that comes with it. Do you think the government has put, a, has, has put across stringent measures to try and combat corruption? Uh, when you mention, uh, when you talk about measures, one thing, the most fundamental is the law. I think in Kenya, the law that we have currently is uh, enough to work with. What is lacking is implementation. And uh, what is just mentioned about the goodwill. With the current law, we have, we have a good framework on paper. We mm -hmm. have offices that are supposedly independent, mm -hmm. but uh, the goodwill is uh, where the problem is. Over the last uh, two years, we've seen a lot of uh, publicity in terms of uh, from the executive and also from the president himself in terms of the support. But still, we, st we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Why is it that uh, through our system, we are unable to punish offenders? Right. What happens when you're looking at uh, any vice? A human being will want to rationalize that is this, is this thing beneficial or not. Mm -hmm. If it's beneficial and he said about rewarding, mm -hmm. see if I'm rewarded from being corrupt, yes. I'll continue being corrupt. All right. And even the one who's not corrupt will see, oh, that guy, eh? mm -hmm. I he we everyone knows he's corrupt. He was hounded out of office or he stole this and that. Mm -hmm. But then after going through the processes, he's still being uh, rewarded. All right. So you have more people even now looking at it as a positive, uh, as something uh, they want to engage in. All right. Because uh, the reward is there. All right. We will be talking about the three arms of the government later on, especially the judiciary, which has been quite alleged with so much of issues. But let me bring in Elsa. And Elsa, I want you to talk about the issue of, we have been talking about the public sector. Let's talk about the private sector and the issue of corruption and fraud. What's your take on it? Okay, good morning and thank you for the opportunity. I'd like to first say that the, the notion of that fraud and corruption happens in the private sector is, is not 100% because mm -hmm. I think it's the same way it's been perpetrated in the uh, public sector is the same way that it's been perpetrated in the private sector. And people tend to dwell so much on what's in the public and forget the private, mm -hmm. the private sector, I mean. 
and thus the, perp the perpetrators of fraud in the private sector, they tend to understand that these guys do not even uh, look into us, they do not even try to recover our assets, yet we are perpetrating behind closed doors and all the focus is on the private, on the public mm -hmm. sector. So as, uh, as we are looking at fighting corruption and fraud, we should also consider the fact that things are happening in the private sectors. Mm -hmm. The perpetrators know that the private sector is closed and that people are just dwelling in one sector. Yeah. Do you think uh, the, uh, the private sector is far much worse than the public? I can't say it's far much worse, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just behind the, pr the public sector. All right, Kabira, yeah. let me bring you on board because I understand also in the private sector, what she is mentioning about the private sector, do you think there's something we need to address? Well, I, I agree with you that the private sector is not left behind when it comes to even matters of corruption and all that, simply because, as he clearly put it, we have, you know, business, uh, government does business with the private sector. And as a matter of procurement, government cannot procure things directly from either the manufacturer. They all, in, a one, in one way, they need to come now to the private sector. Now, these are the limited companies and all that. Mm. Now, looking at two factors which are so much affected by cor uh, the corruption, one is the procurement and the other one is the human resource. Mm -hmm. Human resource in mm -hmm. terms of employment, we've seen a lot of nepotism, nepotism, tribalism and all that. And it's a pattern which you see it's recurring in so many private sectors that some of the, these people at the top, they are really either having people from, from their tribes and all that. That's corruption by itself. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the other side on the procurement. I mean, the private sector, I run a consultancy company. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I even try to bid for... Uh, tenders from the government, there are so many bottlenecks which are put for you so as to make you vulnerable to pay the bribes, which even as simple document as even the, the pre-qualification and all that, always omit that the process has been made so rough and vigorous, such that now you, something which you should get in hours, mm -hmm. it's made to take days. So you'll be vulnerable even when somebody asks you for a bribe. And not everyone who has the ethics and the moral standards to even resist that. So it's something which is dead, touching the both hands, but it's mostly driven driven by the public sector. Mm -hmm. It's the public sector which drives the corruption in the private sector simply because they have put it as a blackmail for you to be able to penetrate this or this, then you really need to talk to our rules. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. something which, which is there and it's just in black and white. It's a matter of fact which as the situation is now. All right. Uh, with what you've mentioned, Elsa, do you think it's time that we redefine what corruption and fraud is? Because most of the people, probably even them who are some of us who are watching, they think corruption is just a matter of stealing billions of money and then you are walking out. He has mentioned about Nepotism has talked about even so much. Do you think it's time that we, we, re, re, we talk about what corruption really is? Yes, I think it's high time that as a nation, as a, uh, as a country, we should start it, if amending the acts. The, the, wh whatever perception is out there for corruption, mm -hmm. we should put clear stance on what corruption and bribery and, also, and fraud is as a station, as a nation and as a country. Do you think greed is why we are having increased cases of corruption? Yes. Why would it you all comes to greed, because mm -hmm. for a corrupt person to, to go into corruption, he, ha he or she must have a motive. And greed is one of the motives that uh, drives to mm -hmm. corruption and all other fraudulent issues. Colleagues, do you think greed should be addressed in as much as you're taking corruption? Uh, actually, yes, but it starts at a very basic level. Mm -hmm. It starts at home. Mm -hmm. You see the things that uh, we, someone doesn't just uh, become corrupt one day. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. All right. They begin young. Yes. All right. That's why the, you see the cultural system or where religion comes in and society, things that are supposed to form children as they grow up, mm -hmm. They are basically being, providing the uh, stepping stones of the foundation. Now, what happens is, if uh, the focus is so much of it's mine, that we are killing the communal aspect of things. Uh, you go, just take it uh, as an example, you go to an estate or where people live. Mm -hmm. In our traditional setting, people used to live together. Now, we live in uh, single dwellings, this is my compound, this is my gate. Mm -hmm. Now it goes uh, ahead to now what I was talking earlier about the lifestyle and the good things of life. The more you want the good things for yourself, mm -hmm. then you are, 
you are likely to work hard to try and achieve those things but then the more when you achieve what happens is that i want a bicycle mm -hmm. when i get a bicycle i feel that this bicycle is not nice i want a motorbike and then i want a car and then i want a bigger car and all that you all see right. the as a, a human beings mm -hmm. we tend to want good things things are just as time is going by yes mm -hmm. but now well, as you are doing that uh, you may overdo it everybody has a greed in themselves as in wanting things uh, to satisfy themselves mm -hmm. as individuals but then if it gets to a point that you fail to see the bigger picture that you are living in a society and it's communal mm -hmm. that even for example if i have a mansion yes next to a slum you get it am i living well not at all because the mansion is actually it's like a factory because i need to put <laughs> a very big wall mm, and uh, it's more like even a prison right so what happens is a uh, when you don't control your greed mm -hmm. you'll get those things for that are satisfying you but around you if uh, there is uh, people who lack or there's poverty you may end up biting and then what happens when cor where corruption is concerned is that you want to get more as i said uh, security and all mm -hmm. that but then you are stealing for example from the public all these things or the good things that you want from yourself for yourself and your family you are living with these other people that we stolen from. You have a 4x4 four four machine, but the road has a portal which everyone else is using. Mm -hmm. You're getting. So it, uh, the level of greed mm -hmm. uh, is a big uh, factor. When you're looking at uh, the dark side of things, right. where we come when uh, you're looking at investigations and fraud specifically, uh, find pressure, any form of pressure, is one of the things that uh, uh, can make someone become Probably. And the pressure, there's good pressure. You see, when you want to pay school fees, you need to pay rent. That is the positive side of it. Yes. <laughs> right. So the, everyone has some pressure. Uh. Meaning everybody has the potential uh -huh. of uh, being fraudulent right. because of that pressure. But then when uh, it becomes uh, too much and then mm -hmm. the pressure is now negative, you see, when you want... Is it a, a question, uh, Collins, is it a question mm -hmm. of how you handle the pressure? Or rather, it's a question of like how, how to just go and steal and mm -hmm. solve the situation and move on with life. I think uh, everything should be measured. Too much of anything is bad. Mm -hmm. You're getting. Mm -hmm. And uh, if your pressure is coming from a vice, what? you need to satisfy it. Mm -hmm. If you cannot satisfy it from uh, legit means, you look for legit, legit means you need to satisfy that pressure. Mm -hmm. All right, Collins, and I want to go short. Let me come to you, Elsa. He has mentioned about culture and upbringing, and he, of course, mentioned about the same earlier on. My question is, should we really be blaming the government or should we be bringing the parents who are bringing up these children in the, in the context of failure in terms of how we deal with corruption? Uh, I think we can put the blame on both because mm -hmm. on looking at the government, it, it all comes to the culture that uh, it has uh, given us. As little kids, our children growing up, what do they find? What do they find other people doing? What do they find people that they look up to doing? It's all about the culture. And if my government is corrupt, maybe my family is not corrupt. I'll grow up in a family that is not corrupt, I agree. But what will happen when I leave my family and go out to the corrupt government? A corrupt government that I have to pay to get a job, I have to pay to get a certificate. I have to pay even to see someone, you know. Mm -hmm. I might come from a non-corrupted uh, family, but once I enter the market and find the government or the society or even the private sector that is corrupt, then the culture I'll get, you know, uh, bad morals, mm -hmm. what they do to the good morals? They corrupt. They corrupt, mm -hmm. yeah. So right. it's, it's two way. Right. Yeah. Now that it's too, let me come to Kaberia. The ESCC was restructured in 2011 from the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission. And now we have seen several arrests. But as of now, verdicts still remain with the judges. What is not working? Well, I think uh, we've seen a lot of changes in the ESCC and uh, some it's even through the resignation of, of, the, of the commission, of the chair, like we had Kinisu, and mm -hmm. before Kinisu, we had Mumo Matemu, mm -hmm. and then uh, that's now at least Wabukala has been, at least has served for some quite a longer time. 
But now looking at uh, for ESCC to really function, there really need to be a lot of goodwill and support from both the judiciary, the legislation, because ESCC, their works is just limited mm -hmm. for them just from the investigations and even to some extent in the uh, prosecution through the DPP. Mm -hmm. But now when it comes to vindicating and all that, that's left now to the judiciary. judiciary yes. And now that's where we have, we have seen a huge gap. Because we've seen ESCC doing some internal investigations, they have done thorough scrutiny of various documents. Going they, even abroad. Exactly, going even abroad, they mm -hmm. present their files to the DPP and the other side will do a very good work and even ensuring the prosecution is done very fast. Now when it goes to the judiciary now, that's the time we are hearing of some uh, funny fines mm -hmm. and some things Bonds. which really uh, yeah which really cannot be able to stand on that sometimes they claim that the evidence is not substantive enough to support the case mm -hmm. which i don't think is the situation mm -hmm. we've seen that even somebody who is corrupt and with the cases of what the billions is given a fine of fifty thousand mm -hmm. so it means that when, whenever i'm stealing let me steal with a fifty thousand on top so that that can be able to cater <laughs> for the for the fine and the legal fees so something we are seeing some mediocrity in that and i think for the ESCC to be very functional and strong let's have a, a with sectoral support all the way from just executive i know there's a lot the back stops with the executive mm -hmm. because there is a lot of power in the presidency president has a lot of powers to control various things Kabiria, what more should the president do well, one thing on the president, when you're looking at the powers of the president mm -hmm. itself, even the ESCC itself, we've seen the way president himself look at what the goodwill he has given to the DCI. The other day in Safari Park, I attended the Taxpayers Day, and the president I publicly stated that I have given a lot of support and I have a lot of confidence with the DCI and the DPP. And we'll see that these two gentlemen, cannot and no did mm -hmm. urge, they are so close to the president, and there's a lot of support and the goodwill they are getting. Such that if DPP or cannot arrest you, you cannot make a phone call to the president to protect you, simply because this person is given like that same powers and privileges which I like by the president. But now when it comes now to the ESCC and matters of corruption, mm -hmm. sometimes you see a lot of protection. The other day we saw some politicians, members of parliament who are being investigated, but because they are aligned to this party or to this community, you'll see that there's um, other powers from the presidency. When I say the president is not even the president, it's mm -hmm. the executive exactly. arm. Mm -hmm. When they are coming trying to interfere with the cases, they're even trying to do some exoneration of the person even before the judiciary takes over. Mm -hmm. So I think it's presidents should give a very strong goodwill through uh, his, his powers and even through the systems that he's controlling. What are the systems that you think the president should be focusing deeply on? To? Well, I think one is the ESCC itself. One, looking at even the, the, the budget of ESCC and uh, the president has even power to lobby, is the party lead of, let's say, Jubilee, which is the, has the majority stake in the parliament, and which, again, he will be able to lobby for them even to get more funding and more support. Mm -hmm. Again, looking at the director of public prosecution, we also need the, the, the DC and the National Police Service. But now there are some reforms which goes beyond mm -hmm. the budget and the financial issue. They mm -hmm. just need a goodwill for... Look at the way Michu, what Michuki did. Michuki, to bring the sanity in the Matatu sector, it did not even require a budget. It is required a strong voice and firmness for him to say that I've given an ultimatum of 48 hours or two weeks. Mm. I want to see all the vehicles with safety belts. People complied. Matiang has done the same. When we had digital migration, some mm. people are protesting, but finally it happened. So that's now the strong will we right. need from the president. Just from dread, something which is actionable and demonstrable. Okay, Elsa, do you think that can work for the public, the private sector rather? Yes, it can work. We need that aggressiveness yes. and that boldness? We, yes, we need that aggressiveness and yeah. boldness because it's at the end of the day, it's the tone at the top. All right. Whatever the top says shall be implemented. Okay. And if the tone is strict, the tone is, is All right. implemented. Collins, what's your take on that? Should we really employ that? Yeah, okay, what I'll uh, say is uh, I have a different way of looking at it when you mm -hmm. look at ESCC. Uh, I think uh, most of the investigations, ESCC, DCI, they are focused towards criminal prosecution, meaning you want to punish someone. Mm -hmm. So I've stolen 100 million. You go through a process of 
punishing me. Mm -hmm. How does it go? They'll investigate. Mm -hmm. They'll summon. They'll summon. They finish the process. Mm -hmm. They go to the DPP. He agrees. He takes you to court. Witnesses come and all that. The magistrate or the judge will make uh, a verdict. Or will make a ruling. If hundred, if I have hundred million in my pocket, I have a serious war chest. Mm -hmm. To number one, manipulate the entire process, or pay people, or come even to media to, as in to to, to shape Luathan. public opinion. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have that money, I cannot do that. So why am I saying this? I think the ESC investigation should be focused towards recovering the money. Right. Yes. Punishing, mm -hmm. yes, it's good. Okay. Because if, for example, you've just frozen my assets, all my mm -hmm. accounts, as the case is going on, you say I don't have money to mm -hmm. play around. Yes. And you say I start feeling the pain of stealing. Which, of course, has happened before. We have seen even the Campbell governor, his accounts were frozen. We have seen even him shutting down his company just here, right next to us, mm -hmm. which has happened. But now, I want us to come now... Uh, Let's exempt EACC out of the discussion now. Let's talk about the role and the responsibility of young people in combating corruption and fraud. What is their, what is their role? What's the place for the young people? Okay, for the young people, I think uh, they're the most unfortunate uh, group in our society right now. They are the majority, but they, are the they hold the least stake. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's start uh, from uh, our government and the political system. How is the government formed by election? Mm -hmm. What is election all about? Representation. Yes. The person who has the most numbers will get to represent. The youth have the numbers, meaning they play a big role in electing whoever is in office from president to the MCA. Now, during political mobilization, it's mm -hmm. actually the youth who are mobilized. Most of the time, the mobilization, that's the beginning of corruption. Voter bribery, paying money to... You see, all the things that happen, we call electoral malpractices, mm -hmm. but they are the beginning, because if you go through that process, uh, corrupt people, youth are being paid money to fight amongst themselves, or to go stone a candidate and do all that, you are having a candidate who is ready, that's their style. Mm -hmm. When they go into office, that's what they are going to do. Uh, and then, secondly, on uh, elections and youth, to do all that and to manage this politics, it requires resources. Mm -hmm. So what's happening, the p money that has been stolen, or illicit money, is used to finance the youth during uh, the electioneering period. Mm -hmm. So already if the youth are supposed to they can say no they they mobilize themselves and choose who they want mm -hmm. they can even have one of their own so that they are in and have a stake they have a stake in uh, representation because uh, political uh, campaigns are expensive if i come and splash 50 million 100 million 200 million to be elected why am i doing it you see every is an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. You need to, inv for any shilling you're putting in a venture, you need to get returns. It has to come back in profit. So the, th the thing is that all this money that flows around election, which mostly goes to the youth, mm -hmm. is seed money for someone running into office. And this ma the, when this person gets into office, the youth will be happy that uh, they've given money and all that. Mm. They'll need to get a return on their investment. How do they get it? Public coffers. All right. So I think for the youth, uh -huh. the level of awareness, first of all, mm -hmm. of how, what happens uh, in politics mm -hmm. during the election and how it influences how they are governed on a day-to-day -day basis is very important. Well, wow. Collins, talking about awareness, I want to bring you uh, C, uh, C and ask this question. We have seen Botswana bringing in measures of how to sensitize young people on how to deal with corruption and from a tender age that, uh, in their junior schools. They are being told about how to deal with corruption. Should we really employ the same here in Kenya, or what should we exactly do? I think we should uh, employ the same here in Kenya. We should start teaching uh, our children from a tender age about corruption, because uh, I can say even at uh, for the small kids, mm -hmm. they might not know they are uh, they are engaging in corruption. But uh, small deeds like if you give me your pencil. 
if I use your pencil for this you class, I'll, I'll give you mandazi during break time. Mm -hmm. You know, they do not know that whatever they are doing is corruption. They just think that they, they want to, since they want to get something, they need to, to ask for something in, in return. Mm -hmm. So I think education is one of uh, the things that we should uh, focus on and also awareness in our schools, not only even in seminars or uh, grown-up talks, even kids and meeting them in schools, having campaigns that cut across primary, kindergarten and secondary school, I think is a good way to go. Uh, are there any other measures that we can take? Yes, there are mm -hmm. many measures. Especially for the private sector? Yeah, there are many measures, if I can say from a uh, fraud, fraud perspective, mm -hmm. as a fraud examiner, I think the top, at the top, will really, can, can do a lot of changes in an organization, even employ, uh, educating employees, because majority of these employees, they're not aware of uh, what fraud is, mm -hmm. what corruption is, yeah? They think that corruption is just bribing a policeman. No, corruption is even your thoughts can also be corrupted. Right. Yeah, not just the deeds, right. but even the thoughts can be, <laughs> okay. can be corrupted. So I think awareness for both employees mm. can, and maybe the, uh, the, the public can also be a good way to go mm -hmm. in mitigating all that. All right, it's, yeah. it's quite a topic of concern. And uh, I don't know, Kaberia, what do you think about the issue? Because it's affecting the youth so much, considering that the fact that young people are the biggest portion of Kenya's population, according to the recently released census. What, what should we address in terms of corruption and the young people? What should we invest so much in the young people to reduce corruption in Kenya? Well, uh, thank you so much. And uh, one of the things which makes me happy is that uh, Y254 is a youth channel. And uh, it's really one of the channels which is really advocating and creating awareness and giving space for young people to be able even to speak like that we were speaking. This is one tool whereby we are trying to create awareness and mm -hmm. getting some platform to iron out our issues. And I wish other media stations are also able to advocate this and borrow this leaf. But now looking at the young people, as you've said, these young people are so vulnerable to so many things. One, because of even the unemployment. And you'll find out that unemployment in Kenya is so high at even 67%. And when you look at all the reasons, it will go back to corruption. Mm -hmm. This unemployment, when you are not financially stable, you are so vulnerable to anything which will give you finances. So that means if a politician wants to rise to power and you are given 50 bob, sometimes it's not the mistake of these young people for them to get the 50 bob as, as per se, to be honest about this. Mm -hmm. It's because of the way the system, these people are so vulnerable, they don't have anything meaningful to bring them an income at mm -hmm. the end of the day. So for us to be able now to bring our old changes, young people, one is you can be able to fight that by first of all looking for ways of even empowering yourself. I think when you are empowered as, a, and as an individual, you reduce the vulnerability. Sometimes corruption, it does not really come up even on the greed level. Because, because before it comes to greed, mm -hmm. it means that you, sh you, must, you should be having something and there's something you want to get. But as young people, they are position whereby they have nothing. Even if you multiply zero, it will still be zero. And so most of the young people, they are at a position they want to be on step one. But now when you look at even like the way you're talking about bribing a police officer, or if they have a salary, what they want is to have more. But mm -hmm. young people, what they have is zero, and they're trying to get something. But now for you to be able not to be vulnerable, for example, like as we are waiting for employment and all that, I always, I'm in the training space at business advisory. I always tell young people, please look for something. Just don't despise any form of work. If it's selling mandizi, avocado, whatever thing. Because when you have your 50 shillings and a politician gives you that 50, you'll have a reason to say no. But if you do not have a reason to say no, mm -hmm. as much as you may have the values, the integrity, the ethics, you'll be so much vulnerable. And at some point, you'll think, feel that I've sent so many no's and the ones who said yes, they are really doing something better than me. Mm -hmm. So the first thing as a young people, empower yourself in, a, in a, a means that you'll be able to make an income. So after then the other thing is now to change the lens. Mm -hmm. You see, that it's very unfortunate that we the young people, we say that we are the majority. But when it comes to making decisions, you know we are the most elite, you know we have the internet, we, we understand the law more than anyone. 
But now when it comes to elections, we have not been able to change that lens to bring the objectivity. Because we are voting in people who are giving us now the money and, you know, the ones who has made a name there, you know, the most famous guy. So if you are able to be objective and say, let's say, these are the issues we are talking about. Mm -hmm. We're young people, we need employment. For us to achieve this, we need somebody to be able to bring in a bill or I'm sworn about employment so we are now talking about the things of issues so the young people need to change first of all our mindset to be able now to look at the issues and not even just things beyond money the the money and the tribe yeah. right uh, you have mentioned some something about um you know corruption being a wholesome thing it entails you know the government and even the young people and everyone else do you think uh, as citizens we have played our responsibility in fighting corruption well i can say some citizens all right, so I'm citizen. But and actually, the number is smaller than I may even be, be able to put it. Mm -hmm. And you know the reason why is that, you know, we are citizens, there are things we call the models. There are so many, like, even in the media, there must be someone in the media who you look up to. Mm -hmm. When you say, when I grow up, though I know you've already grown up. <laughs> but now, <laughs> there is always that somebody you're looking up for direction and mm -hmm. for vision. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, and the, most of these people we look up, these are now our leaders, mm -hmm. the politicians. Sometimes we as the community, I heard somebody saying that this, you are good as long as you are stealing for us. Right. You know, there is a community which say now, somebody pub, stood in public and said, you know, I was stealing for you. Mm -hmm. And people were clapping because I was in government and I stole money, but it's not bad because I was stealing to help you. And now this is what now the citizens have heard. As long as you are stealing and helping us, now you are good. You are, that's not corruption. That's now it has come to assist us. So I think the public also, mm -hmm. they have not played a big role mm -hmm. because the people we've looked at for even direction and the people have given us the wrong image of what the marking scheme should be. Mm -hmm. So, but now for us to be able to fight as citizens' corruption, one thing I always talk about is ethics, mm -hmm. integrity, yes. and the, moral, the morals. You know, the moral fabric is so broken. Mm -hmm. When we stand on that, we'll be strong enough and we have had some reasonable voices the activists the others who have been able to stand and say not corruption some people have been asked for a bribe from a police pass policeman and they have refused to pay the bribe and they are ready to face the consequences but now are we ready to face the consequences so that right. now should be the big question for me i'm ready i don't know about others all right all yeah. right thanks very much for that uh, insight we will get apparently to wind up because of the interest of time we are far much spent but i want to give each and every one of you a bit 30 seconds each and i want to begin with collins uh being a forensic investigator you have dealt so much you have done so much of research investigations and what should you what would you rather recommend that we do so as to try and mitigate corruption and fraud I think something very simple for everyone in society. I don't think we are mad enough or we are annoyed by corruption. We have not reached the maximum. Yeah, of we are anger. not annoyed. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at this. Uh, you see, now we are interact with us on Twitter. Mm. If you go to Twitter, you see people when people are annoyed with a product or something, there is normally a lot of venting, and you can see how people are annoyed mm -hmm. in this country. But when it comes to, I think we tolerate corruption. And we are not very annoyed. The moment, as a society, everyone is annoyed, from uh, the elite mm -hmm. to the person on the ground, it will mean the, you, are, you are actually making the space smaller. Or rather, the room for corruption is minimal, because the guys who are corrupt will have nowhere. You see, about the policeman. Mm -hmm. You see, a policeman will take a bribe today because he took yesterday, and he was paid. Mm -hmm. When it becomes difficult to get people who are paying, yes. They'll also stop uh, asking. But then the tolerance level, mm -hmm. for me, is what is, uh, we need to work on. So we've been tolerating corruption each and every single day. Yes. All right. Uh, Kabiri, being, being a political analyst and, of course, being on the field in terms of uh, the public, uh, the private sector, rather, what would you advise? I think what I would advise, uh, one, let me speak to the young people because I know that's the biggest followership for, uh, for this channel. One thing I always, I never underemphasize or emphasize the need for you to empower yourself and to join associations which have a common voice of reasoning. For example, we have the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, we have the Kenya National Chamber for Commerce. Uh, okay, let's not ask the question of why, because the question of has it been functional, Kepsa? Well, it, to some extent, because it, I can say it has been functional to some extent, because always they do have the, the, the round table with the president, right. though not everyone who managed to go there, but there is a platform for you to be able even to raise your views, 
to there. There are other things like lobbying for even for you to get businesses and all that. Just a networking forum. But now, because when you in, in a in an umbrella, you have a strong voice as compared to one voice of Kabere here. So when you are able to unify your voices and bring that, you are able to champion and things which are of common interest. So uh, my advice is, young people, please. As much as we're speaking of about the unemployment, as much as we are talking about waiting for us to get jobs, right. please, one way of fighting corruption is being empowered as an individual. Start a business, do something, even your talent can be your business. I know right. it's not a business segment, mm -hmm. but it's something which I know it can be able to assist each and every one person, at least when you're economically empowered, you are less vulnerable. All right, from yeah. an entrepreneur's mind, from of ASC. course. <laughs> yeah. All right, many thanks. And now, winding up with the ULC, L let me ask, you are a forensic, uh, or rather fraud examiner investigator, you have dealt with so much for some time now. Should we really employ uh, tough measures and more stringent measures in combating comp corruption and fraud? Uh, I can say yes and no at the same time. Yes, because it, it might work for others, and no, because as long as I have a drive, whatever measure you put there cannot stop me. Yeah. So I think uh, as a conclusion, what I could say is that we should look at uh, some of, as a youth, from a youth perspective, we should look at other youth uh, activists, for example, like Boniface, whatever he has been saying. He has been very strict on the fight of corruption and bribery, but what are the youth doing? Condemning, condemning him, mm -hmm. saying if you were elected, you'd be the same. Yeah. Right. So I think we should believe in the people who are trying to fight corruption, right. and we should take a stand and say no to, to, to corruption as individuals, not even as an organization, but it all starts with the individual. Right. Yes. That has been, of course, Kaberia, Elsa, and of course, Collins Ojembo from OCS. And many thanks for making time to join me. It has been such an honor to have you, of course. Well, that has, that's it for now. We wind up and we call it a day for youth and politics. It's always a pleasure to have you from that time and this time now. Val comes up next, you know, and we get to have so much lined up for you. My name is Karanja Alex. We get to do this again next week on Monday. See you tomorrow for Entrepreneurship Tuesday.